welcome to the Lesser Summerall teaching. Uh, we have been doing video lessons for 17 years. I presume we have more video studies than maybe everybody else put together. We have over 3,000 video lessons and uh, on subjects from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation. And this special group of studies that we are taking right now has to do with compulsive obsession. Now, this is something that I have been working on for a number of years, and I'm intently interested in it because the whole of our society seems to be under some sort of compulsion and maybe obsession, and maybe they don't even know what is driving them and what is making them act like they do. So these lessons are very important to our whole nation. I wish that every person in our nation could see these programs and get their life readjusted because some are in ignorance and they think they're born this way. They, they, they think that uh, an outside force has gripped them, that they can never be released from it, which is not true. You can be released from anything and from everything that Jesus Christ, the great master, the grand master, that he can set you free. And so we just want you to know that God loves you and that he is able to help you. These lessons are called, How Do You Cope With This Thing Called Compulsive? You know, and it's an obsession. You know, you, 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 you have no more freedom to make a choice. You do certain things and you don't want to do them. Some men will kick their own car on, in on the side, make a dent in it that costs them two or three hundred dollars, and they don't know why they do it. So some men slap their wives, try and say, I'm sorry, I don't know why I did it. Well, I do. It's very simple, you see. You are an, under a compulsive spirit of the devil, and you need to be set free from it. It's very simple. And you can be set free from it. God wants to set you free from it. You simply do not have to stumble, stagger, fumble through life. Jesus is the director. He says, I am the way and the truth and, and the life. This compulsive desire, uh, it can be so explosive, like it was with Adolf Hitler. He swept with him 50 million people into eternity, and he was possessed. He was so obsessed with compulsive desires and feelings and energies until he had no mind of his own. He had no mind of his own. He had submitted himself to infernal powers and authorities that possessed him. You don't have to suffer that. Now he wishes he had not suffered it, but it's too late for him. But for you, it's right on schedule. We want you to know that. Your, your great desires can bring tranquility. Desire can bring tranquility. Or that same desire uh, can, can turn you around and make you the most obnoxious person in your community and especially in your home and maybe down to work. There are people that are hated by everybody in the workshop because they're so full of evil and so full of criticism and, and so full of big mouthing it off to people can't stand them. And that same person gets in a corner and says, why do I act like that? I don't want to be like that. Well, then you have a compulsive obsession that you need to be rid of and that Jesus Christ came into the world to set men free. And in the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verse 36, says, in whom the Son sets free is free indeed. So you can be free. And we want you to be free by his mighty power. A human person, and you must get this, at different times in his life, has, has different drives. And I'll, I'll, I'll speak of those just, just, just for a few moments. At different periods in his life, he acts different ways because he is a different person during those different periods in life. And, and so uh, you can have a compulsive desire in one year, and the next year you have, you have something altogether different uh, from, from that one. For example, why does a young man look over a thousand young women and walk up to one of them and say, I desire you more than anything else in the world? Oh, you say, that's love. What is love? 
You see, love is a compulsive thing that gets a hold of a man or a woman. The king of England, Edward VIII, gave up his throne for Wally Simpson, a divorcee, that somebody else had already exploited. Gave up his throne. And I lived in England at that time. And nobody over there understood it, unless it was a few funny people on the street. The press couldn't understand it. The people that I met with couldn't understand it. Here was a person with all the money in the world a person wanted. He was king. Uh, here was a person with prestige until he had the highest seat anywhere he went in the world. And here was a person who was some strange compulsion, dropped the whole thing, went to France and lived in a rented house until he died. <laughs> until he died. Isn't that something? Now you talk about obsessions. I can tell you a funny thing. I was in England when the potteries, they say, made about three million plates, dinner plates, that would sell on the world market with King Edward VII's picture, or seventh or eighth, whichever it was, with his picture on it as the King of England. But what they didn't know, that in his heart, he was going to make a different decision. He wanted a woman and gave up wealth and power for a woman. As I've been trying to tell you, there are compulsive obsessions that can become nightmares or they can actually become heaven on earth. They can be so beautiful and so wonderful. And so you, you, you have to search inside of yourself and see if you're in full control of your total being or if you're obsessed from a force on the outside and you need a deliverance. You're not hopeless and you're not helpless. That's what I'm here for. You can be set free. You can redirect your ship of state in another direction to another port. You can have another destiny than the one that you're following. Let's try it. Let's believe it. Let's accept it. And let's be what God would have us to be. What's inside of a man when he looks at 500 cars and says, uh, I want that one. <laughs> he wants it so bad, he will deprive himself in certain areas. He will conform to conformity that he's not used to. He'll do all kinds of things to bring that, could we call it obsession? Well, maybe every free moment he runs down and looks in the window and there it is waiting for him. He goes inside and it's just metal, but he rubs his hands on it. <laughs> he feels it. It's just another car, but he sits at that steering wheel on the inside on the display floor and said, boy, I want this thing on the outside and I'm going to drive in the left lane. I'm trying to show you that man is driven by more desires than one. And the only thing we're asking of you is to be sure that they're good, positive, correct, clean, holy, and that you do not have a monster hidden in your closet that's causing you to do things that you really don't want to do. Half our world right now is doing stuff they don't want to do. And they feel victimized. I don't know why I did it. The devil made me do it. And it's all inside of you, out of your heart. Jesus said, out of your heart there cometh adulteries and fornications and lyings. So it's on the inside of us. We can give you a strength that you never had before in the Lord Jesus Christ. We can give you a faith that you never had before in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you can be a winner and not a loser if you want it, if you will receive it, if you will accept it. I want you to do that. Yeah, we're world changers. And we've come to change your world and the world in your home and in your office and your factory. 
We believe that Christ is the answer to your needs, to your problems, that he's reaching for you right now to bless you, strengthen you, and to make you the champion that God wants you to be. What causes a woman to look at a wardrobe of magnificent dresses and a very chic, exclusive dress shop? And after looking at 1400, she says, that one. <laughs> I want it. And she won't leave the shop without it. Desire. Desire. What is desire? What is that urge within you for decisions that map your life and map your destiny? Are they good ones? Are they divine? Are they godly? Or are they of the devil? Do you lust after another man's wife until you give everything in the world to sleep with her? Do you so desire money that you steal and finally you get caught up with it and you go to jail? That's not living. And that's a corrupt desire. And that's what we're talking about when we say compulsive obsession. I'd like to just tell you something. God will not obsess you, really. He gives you sweet desires. God permitted Lucifer to cause rebellion in heaven. He didn't stop him. A third of the angels fell. God did not stop Adam and Eve in the garden. You say, why? It's a big secret. Maybe you've never heard it. God is, say is. God is love. He does not have love. He is. If you ever understand love, then you understand God. The Bible says God has power. God has mercy. God has justice. But God is love. So if you ever discover what love is, you have discovered God. God is love. Now, love is not love without expression. You put love in a box, and it dies. Love is only love in action. Now, you know that. If you love a young woman, you marry her. If you love a child, you have a child. If you love your work, you go early. You're not late. You see, love is a powerful force in all of our lives. Now, God is love, and love desires love. So that's where you come in. God created you. And you have a heart like God has. You have desires like God has. You're compatible with God. The Bible says you're made in the image and likeness of God. But the devil comes in, and he wants to take those same powers that love and turn them into hate. He wants to take those constructive forces in you that nails a piece of wood and makes a house to live in, that makes an automobile to ride in, and cause you to knock the world to pieces, <laughs> tear down the house, burn it. We got a lot of devils like that in the world today, and they don't know what drives them. Like maniacs, they're driven. You ask the man that stands on the street corner and shoots passers-by. Why? I don't know. You ask the man that's killed six nurses. He doesn't know their name. He's never seen them before. He cuts off their heads and cuts off their arms and cuts off their legs, throws them all over the apartment. You say, why did you do that? I don't know. Well, I know. You are obsessed with demon power. And you need to be set free from the devil, who is Lucifer, who is the devil, who is the destroyer, who is the deceiver, who is the arch liar. You need to be set free from him. And Jesus can do that. He's here right now to do it. This is your mighty moment of knowing freedom as you have never known it before in your life. How fortunate you are to be looking straight at me right now. What does a boy mean when he goes into a pet shop and you've got dozens of dogs and cats and, and, uh, and, and birds and he looks at a little dog about that long and says, that one. And if you try to break him free from it, you've got all kind of trouble. He wants to go home with that little dog in his arms. 
That's desire. That is desire. And it's a good desire, you see. I'm only telling you that every human has a desire. You can have a spiritual desire. Some of us desire to go to church. We desire to hear people preach. We desire to sing. We, we have these desires. But on the other hand, there are multitudes of people who have evil desires. I want to kill. I want to destroy. I want to curse. I want to break. I want to do bad. I want to lie. I want to commit adultery. You see, then there you got a negative thing that the devil gets a hold of it. And that's where he makes this compulsive obsession. That you're not your own anymore. You can't do anything about it anymore. You can't stop yourself. There are many things that can create desire. I was thinking a few moments ago here. Memory can create desire. You see? You, you, you can, well, you can remember ice cream and saliva begins running all over your mouth. You know, you can remember apple pie. You can remember the Alps Mountains in Switzerland and see the sun set and have the alpine glow and you get to away from it for a while. You say, I just wish I could see it again. You see lovely Hong Kong and from Victoria Peak you look down at the harbor and see the ships of the world down there and you get away from it and you say, I wish I could go to Hong Kong. And so memory can create desire within us and that's true in evil. You can remember your adulterous situations. You can remember your lying situations. You can remember your deceiving situations and say, hey, I would like to have some more of that. You don't have to have it. God doesn't want you to have it. You say, how can I get this compulsive obsession inside of me? Well, I want to tell you, and, and, and this is worth a million dollars to you. There are about five ways you can get it. Uh, number one, you can receive it through your ears. You can hear the wrong thing. You can hear dirty stories. You can hear hard rock music, you know, uh, uh, steel music, right from the jungles that are praying to the demon gods. And, and you, can, you can hear and have desires that you've never had before. They're subliminal desires that reach down underneath you, underneath the threshold of your soul and get a hold of you like tentacles of an octopus to destroy you. So you can get it by here. You can get it by, by seeing. If David had not walked out on his balcony or up on the top of his house and looked over next door and saw his neighbor's wife naked taking a bath out in the sunshine, if he hadn't seen that, he didn't hear anything. He just looked down and he saw it. You can see the wrong thing. Pornographic literature is bad. And it's wrong. Pornographic movies is wrong because in the very seeing of it, it can change your whole life. It can change your whole destiny. You got to know that. Please, God, help us to know that. I refuse to look at the wrong thing. I turn my head the other way. I, ref I just refuse. I won't permit it. I refuse to listen to the wrong thing. I will not listen to people tell dirty stories. And I, will, I just refuse to be part of that type of thing. And then in your feelings, to touch. You can touch the wrong thing. And through that communication of touch, you can have obsessions come upon you. You, you, you. you can have controlling powers to take a hold of you. Thou should not touch. There are a lot of things in this world you shouldn't touch. You shouldn't touch butterflies. If you do, you spoil them. And they're not pretty no more, and you're messed up too. You're not supposed to. In Hong Kong, we used to have the little touch me not flower. It wasn't really a flower, just a weed, I guess. And I would watch it, look at it, and I'd put a stick, and when I'd get real close to it, it would just close up. It's called touch me not. It just closes up. You leave, and in 30 seconds, it opens back up again. It's an, it's an amazing thing. You put a little stick right close to it, and just as it touches it, it closes up again. And it touch, touch me not. There are many things that you shouldn't touch. You shouldn't touch your neighbor's wife. You see, you just shouldn't touch things that are corrupt and evil. You shouldn't touch lying. Just keep your fingers away from that type of thing. And so your sense of touch can do that. And also your sense of taste, tasting the wrong thing, alcoholic beverage, all kinds of drugs from marijuana up and down. You can get the taste in there. And the first thing you know, it will become an obsessive thing. You desire it. 
I feel so sorry for people under the power of nicotine. I've seen them sit and shake like this, you know, because they couldn't get to a cigarette quick enough to calm them down on the inside, their sense of taste, dominated by factors that are not normal, not natural, not human, but they are things from the outside con uh, uh, controlling the thing that's on the inside. You don't have to do that. No matter what thinks it's got control of you, today is your day of being set and free. Today is your day of liberty. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Jesus Christ set you free, and you don't have to have it anyway. Also, your sense of speech. You can say things that brings awful powers into being. You can say things that are sweet and bring the Spirit of God into being. Or you can say filthy things, dirty things, sexy things, and bring into being something that wasn't there before. And, and so all of, your, all of your, 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 your five senses, they identify with this thing. And, and you have to learn that and know whether, whether you want to be controlled by such forces or not. I want to be controlled by that which is good and right. I want to do it first through my spirit. My spirit is my born again nature that came into me when I came into contact with divine power and became a new person by the power of the living God. That's my spirit. My spirit is now the king of my life and directs my soul. And my soul is made up of my mind, my emotions, and my will. I wish you'd get lessons on that and learn about that. That's who you are and that's what dominates your life. And so I want to be dominated by a good power, a kind power, a beneficent power, a great, wonderful God. I don't want to be directed by the devil and by baser desires and baser obsessions that bring nobody any good. Nobody. <laughs> I want you to be obsessed with good things. And I want you to know that right now we've come to set you free. Lord Jesus, at this moment, I come to my neighbor and my friend, and I ask you now to set them free. I come against every compulsive obsession that is not godly and holy. I come against it by a power that is greater and stronger, the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And I command you to be free. Raise your hands right now. Raise them up and say, thank God I'm free. Then read, read the Gospel of John, chapter 8 and verse 36, that you are free. You are, are free right now. I want you to receive it in the name of Jesus. And I want you to write to me. I want you to secure the audio tape of this lesson. Just get it down on the inside of you. <laughs> Hear it again and again. I want you to get the videotape for your tape player. We have thousands of video lessons for you. To, you ought to get a catalog and look through them, but especially this one now. Order it today and say, I want the video. How do you cope with this obsessive power? And this is lesson number five, so you'll be able to find it real easy. And, and I want you to receive it in Jesus' name. And then I want you to also write to me. I need you. You say, Brother Samuel, I need you. Yes, we need one another. I need you to help me to make more of these. I need you to help me to get further out beyond what we're doing right now. There are multiplied millions of people that have never heard what you've heard today. We want them to hear it. I cannot do it without partners. Go to your phone right now and dial the number on your screen. Write to me. There's my address. And let you and I become friends and partners together to break the powers of demon oppression and obsession and possession upon human beings and set them free, gloriously free, free in this life and free in the life to come. Isn't that beautiful? I'll be back with you with more of these lessons on how you cope with obsessions. And I want you to be here with me, please. I'll be looking for you to see you again. Thank you.